guys and welcome back to Growing Up Gadley. As you, some of you may not know, October is actually Bully Prevention Month, which is why we're doing today's video on words and the power, power to hurt, <gasps> but power to heal. <laughs> we are going to be sharing some scriptures talking about words, how words can be hurtful, and how words can be helpful. Yes. Let's get on to the video. So first we're going to be sharing a couple scriptures talking about words. And maybe we'll break them down a little or tell you something that we got off. Okay, I'll say our first verse. It's in Ephesians 4.29. It says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. I love that verse. And one thing I noticed is that it says, as fits the occasion. Sometimes whether words are good or bad, the right timing is very, very important. My dad told me something about words. You have to have the right words with the right tone at the right time. So um, timing is very important because even if you're being encouraging, sometimes that's not what people need. Alright, so I'm going to be reading some verses in James 3. It says, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the bodies. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Skip down a few verses. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. When I think of the tongue as a fire, I think of it as consuming. We build up our reputation by earning trust, and one sentence, one word can completely consume our reputation and all the things that we've built up for ourselves. That's why we have to be very careful with the the fire that's in our mouth because fire can be good it's warm and can bring heat and light but it also consumes everything we can build up also I know most of us have probably all of us have experienced a time when someone said one mean thing to us and that's all we can remember about that person and that person could have been really really nice to us all along but if they just say one terrible thing that really sticks it can really ruin it for them I'll be reading Matthew 12 33 and 34 Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. How can you who are evil say anything good? For your mouth speaks what your heart is full of. Um, so Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and he was saying, Your mouth speaks what your heart is full of. So if you fill your heart with scripture, and by having it in your heart, um, then you'll constantly be speaking it and speaking life into other people. But if your heart is the root of evilness and you kind of store up bitterness and sin, then out of your mouth, whether you try to hide it or not, it'll come out eventually. I love that last part where it's like, you know, what's really inside will come out because, you know, people try to put on this cover, this mask of themselves, but what they really feel on the inside is eventually going to come out. So you need to make sure that what's on the inside is what you want to be expressed on the outside. Now I'm going to be reading Proverbs 15, 4. A soothing tongue is the tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Again, one word can really crush someone for the rest of their lives, so always be careful what you say to others. Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. When you're kind of mad at someone, a harsh word can really stir anger in someone. I mean, has someone ever called you a name that just made you really angry? A gentle answer will, however, turn away that wrath and calm people down. And it helps you like not get in a lot of fights if you keep a hold of that tongue. can really change a situation for the better if you just say something kind and gentle. And the last verse we're going to be reading is Proverbs 17, 28. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongue. So even though we're foolish sinners, we'll be considered wise if we hold our tongue and really um, think about what we're going to say. So now that we've shared some scriptures about words, we thought that we'd show some application by sharing some stories of ways that words have hurt us and ways that words have healed us. So we thought we'd start with the hurt. 
um, so that we can end on a positive note with the healing. Um, so I really am not one to be too affected by words. I'm not a words of affirmation person like Alana. But there was this one circumstance where I wrote little encouraging notes um, for each of my classmates and I put them all over the whiteboard on like the last day of school. Um, and they were, you know, they were cute and they were a little cheesy, but I thought they a good were, that thought. was a sweet. I yeah. thought that was sweet. And like some of them had verses and stuff. This one kid in my class, though. She had worked really hard on them. Yeah. And I never told him who they were from. I just put them up on the board. I even had one for my teacher. I was like, I feel really good about myself. This, and this is going to encourage someone today. And then one guy in my class, he was like, whoever wrote these is such a dork. And, and I was like, well, I mean, I, I kind of shook it off like, whatever, you know, he's just trying to be cool in front of his friends or whatever. But I realized that that kind of hurt me, realizing that I was trying to do something nice and someone just, it didn't encourage someone. And it kind of put me down. Um, of course, I forgive him and stuff. Um, and I... I don't know if that was his heart intent, or I don't know what he was thinking, but all I know is what I was thinking, and that did hurt me, but I am, I, I worked hard to forgive him, and that was probably the only circumstance I can remember right now where words have really just kind of scarred me a little. Um, but for me, one of the instances that has really stuck with me was, um, if you guys don't know, I really want to be a mom, and when I was little, like, I was like, I'm going to have a ton of kids. And I'm not sure if I want to have like a ton of ton. I mean, I still want to have a good number of kids. Um, but like when I was little, I had like numbers. The last one I remember was 10. When yeah. I was like early middle school, I was like, I want to have 10 kids. Well, I had a, I had a lady who heard me say that. And she was like, oh, you think that now. But once you have your first kid, you're not going to want to do that. And while it seems like such just like a silly response, it really hurt me because... Um, you know, being a kid who wants to be a mom, that's already rare, and I've already had people, like, look down on that because I don't want to go career-based. So, as, you know, a young middle schooler, I think, or somewhere around that age, it really hurt that someone was so discouraging that I just wanted to be a mother and have a bunch of kids. So, the fact that that mother who had, you know, a couple kids of her own was so discouraging to me at such a young age for wanting to do something that rarely anybody wants to do at that age, that's, like, as a job, it was really discouraging and it's been something I've struggled with personally because that is still what I want to do. And so it's always hard for someone to discourage you in that way. But let's go on a happy note and share some times where words have really helped us and healed us. So again, I don't have like one big experience that I can remember of where I was just like, my whole <laughs> life changed because someone told me something. But I have little moments like um, one of my friends, I think she's very beautiful. She's very talented. I love her a lot. And then one day she looked at me and I was like, what? And she goes, you look very beautiful. And since I looked up to her for so long, it made my heart melt just like, because I don't need her affection, you know? Like, I mean, it felt amazing and I'm not like, oh, you're the most beautiful person in the world, right? And I'm not like, oh, I'm the most beautiful person in the world. But how she said that, it really changed my day and just helped me feel good about myself. And then things when my parents just sit down and tell me they're proud of me for what I'm doing. It, it really fills my heart with joy and it helps me to keep on going. You're so beautiful and talented. Well, guys, that is the end of our discussion about words. Like we said, it's Bully Prevention Month, and one of the biggest ways that bullies hurt others is by words. I know I've experienced being bullied. Um, all of those have been verbally, and I know that it can really hurt. So make sure that you're always using your words to glorify the Lord and not to hurt others. Because physical wounds will eventually heal, but those word wounds, as I call them, there are scars that can leave on people's hearts forever. And be sure to ask God to help keep a guard over your mouth because as an extrovert, I have dealt with, you know, some struggles keeping a hand over my mouth. And one time, a couple of times probably, I've said things that might have put others down kind of. And I always want to ask God for forgiveness and ask them for forgiveness and make it right. So we hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned a lot about words. 
Um, our challenge to you guys is to just really watch what you're saying um, and get in a good habit of just being encouraging or if you have nothing good to say, just don't say anything at all. We'll see you guys next time. Click up here to see our Valentine's Day picture uh, video to see all the love languages and click down here to look at the relationships video to learn more about how to have good relationships. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye! Bye.